Continuing on from where we left off, click on the Settings tab in the Stack View. The Settings tab is context sensitive, so we need to make the 3D view the active window. For this project, we're not going to need the ground plane, so click the drop down and set it to None. Now let's go down to the panel that says Desktop. Uncheck the checkbox for Camera Undo. This removes the viewport navigation from the undo list. I find this is an important workflow help and it saves your undo list from getting filled up with camera moves instead of actual changes to the model. With those basic options set, let's add our template plane. Switch the stack view to the panels tab. Now click on the primitives flyout and select the plane icon. With the plane tool active, draw out a plane in the 3D space. Now right click in an empty area to exit the tool. We know our fish template is 800 by 600 and we want to maintain that same aspect ratio. So in the plane panel on the stack view, change the dimension values for the plane to 8.0 for width and 6.0 for height. Also place a check in the double sided box. This will allow the plane to be seen from both sides. Now that we have the size right, we need to rotate the plane upright. We could just type the angle into the info panel, but I want to show you a more visual way. Click on the grid snap icon to turn on grid snap. You can tell grid snap is on because the icon is now highlighted. By default, grid snap has a rotation set to 15 degree increments. You can see this by right clicking on the grid snap icon to bring up its properties panel. Click drag on the green X axis arc and rotate the plane until it's upright. To bring our template image into TrueSpace, we need to open the Link Editor. To get to the Link Editor, select the drop-down menu at the upper right of the Animation Editor window and choose 2D. Let's resize the window up a bit so that we can get a better view of its contents. The Link Editor is a 2D node-based representation of the objects within your scene, and it works well as a scene browser and also for scene management. Click on the Library tab in the Stack View to bring back up the library we opened earlier. Drag the template image Viperfish Concept 800x600.png into the Link Editor. This will create a new bitmap object in the Link Editor. Double click on the object's title bar to expand it. You should now see a thumbnail showing the Viperfish image in the Link Editor. Next, we want to add a material that will display this image on the plane with constant shading so that it won't be affected by lights in the scene. I've provided a pre-made material with the course that does this. Drag the constant texture from the Chapter 1 library and drop it on the plane. You can see that the view updates to show the plane's new texture. Find the Material Inspect tool in the toolbar and click on it. This initially brings up the V-Ray Material Editor in the stack, which is something that we will go over in more depth in a later chapter. With the Inspect icon still active, click on the plane. Since this is a DirectX 9 material, the Inspect tool will bring up the Materials panel in the Panels tab of the Stack View. If this had been a V-Ray material, it would have instead filled in the V-Ray Material Editor with sampled values from the material. For now, all we need to do is drag the image of our fish that we loaded from the Link Editor into the bitmap property of the Constant Texture panel. Right-click to exit the Material Inspect tool. Let's go back into the link editor, find the Viperfish Concept PNG object that we created a few moments ago, and control click drag from the title bar of the Viperfish Concept PNG object over to the constant texture thumbnail in the stack view. Release the mouse button with the cursor over the thumbnail, and notice the thumbnail updates to show that the texture is loaded into the material, and the plane also updates with the new material in the 3D view. I'm sure you noticed that we didn't get exactly what we were expecting. This is because the UV mapping is tiling the material. So we have one more thing to do. Remap the UVs. Make sure the plane is selected by either clicking on it in the link editor or clicking on it in the 3D view. Now find the planar UV projection icon and click on it. This brings up the UV widget and auto projects a planar mapping onto the plane. This is another tool that we will discuss more in a later chapter. But for now our work is done. So right click on an empty space to exit the UV projection widget. 
Be aware that applying a UV projection will break the link to the object's creation parameters, and so changing the creation parameters will no longer have any effect on this object. If the texture looks a bit low resolution, it may be that your workspace texture display size is set too low. To change that, switch to model side, click on the TS6 files menu, and choose display options. Then in the dialog that pops up, change the workspace texture resolution to 1024 or 2048. With that done, switch back to Workspace by clicking on the Workspace tab. We are now set up and ready to begin modeling our fish. So let's save this scene to the library. Click on the Library tab in the Stack View to bring it to the front. Right click on an empty space in our Chapter 1 library and select Insert as Seen. In the next chapter I will discuss the primitives, widgets, and an overview of the point edit tools. We will also begin roughing out the shapes for our fish.